Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Vietnam Innovators. I'm your host, Hao, the CEO of Vietcetera. Uh, today, we have David Nguyen. He's the managing director of Radisson Hotel Group. Uh, he's based out of Singapore, hence the Zoom call today, but he comes to Vietnam quite often. Uh, we're pleased to hear from him because we're going to learn a little bit about hospitality, um, how the trends are, some insights, and also what Radisson is up to. So uh, welcome to the show, David. You know, actually, uh, the first thing that piqued my interest when, um, you know, your name came across our our team in terms of scheduling uh, the next episode and all that is that you are also Vietnamese. <laughs> your accent gives you away as an Australian, though, it sounds like. That's true. That's true. I'm Vietnamese by ethnicity, but nation- Australian by nationality. Uh, David, could you introduce your, your, your role at Radisson? Sorry, I know you're a director, but maybe you can um, give us that snapshot. What you, what you do at Radisson exactly? Sure, sure. So, so I'm I'm the managing director for 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 Radisson um, in the uh, in the region. So I look after Indochina as well as uh, Indonesia. So everything from Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos um, down there. So yeah, I mean that I'm just looking at really spearheading the growth of of Radisson Hotel Group in the region. You know, um, you being based out of Singapore and helping to run um, this huge hotel group uh, for the region uh, from there gives you some pretty interesting insights about hospitality trends. And, you know, I wanted to invite you on the show, too, because I I come from hospitality backgrounds. I used to work at an OTA called Hotel Tonight back in the United States. Um, So definitely know all the lingo and I've stayed at hundreds of hotels, including Radisson Hotel. So very curious about what you guys have uh, to share today. Anyways, that's uh, kind of laying the groundwork for today's show. David, I'd love to hear from you, maybe perhaps a little bit about your Vietnamese background. Um, You know, that's always a nice little lead off. And then uh, perhaps what you're doing at Radisson. And um, let's just start from there. Sure, sure. I mean, well, thank you for having me. I mean, this is a real uh, privilege speaking to you today and and really to all your listeners as well. So, uh, I mean, myself, I mean, I'm David Nguyen and and then I've been uh, in hotels for quite a number of years now. I am Vietnamese by ethnicity. You know, as I mentioned, Australian by nationality, though living in Singapore. Um, that being said, you know, my time in Vietnam in the hospitality space, actually, um, I actually was in Vietnam in 2004 um, for mm-hmm. seven years. So my time wow. in Vietnam is not limited. It, it, it's quite extensive. I've gone through uh, a lot of changes, a lot of growth during that time. I, I, I'd probably say some of the golden years, but at the same time, it was some of the uh, years of, of challenges, whether that will be through swine flu uh, or the bird mm-hmm. flu at that time, you know, during the GFC crisis as well. Um, and one of the great things about Vietnam is, you know, it, it is a very resilient country and, and both from an economic standpoint, but as, as well as the tourism standpoint. So, you know, mm-hmm. I guess where we are today, I mean, this is where we're seeing substantial growth within, uh, within the country. And, and I think there's still more to come. Great. Uh, David, you know, the, the seven years that you spent in Vietnam, it, was that in hospitality? Absolutely. Absolutely. All in hospitality, um, in, in, all in hotels and hotel development. Got it. And that must have been night and day with what you're seeing today, right? I mean, there's, I feel like there's a hotel opening every single week in Vietnam now, but what was it like? Let's give a snapshot of back in 2004 when you arrived, what kind of hotels were there? I mean, here in Saigon, you know, today you have uh, five-star hotels of every kind and uh, business hotels, everything from, um, you know, affordable to the high-end luxury. What was the hotel market like uh, when you arrived in 2004? Yeah, I mean, it was at that time. I mean, there, there was a very uh, there was a very clear delineation. There was either the local hotels, and that's how mm. every country starts, and then of there course. was the yeah. far and few in between of the international operators, right? And then mm. when the international operators did enter in the country, they were always mm. trying to really focus on the the upper upscale, the the luxury end. Um, so you didn't really see that that mid scale end. But on top of that, like you know, for Vietnam and you know back then were. You, you had your common areas, you know, um, you, you had your Ho Chi Minh cities, you, you had your Hanoi's, and Da Nang itself was was just starting to grow. I mean, there, mm-hmm. the whole China Beach area, there was only a few hotels along that beach side. But now, I mean, I, I don't think there is another plot available uh, for, for construction. So, you know, in, mm-hmm. in a very short amount of time, I mean, albeit that it has been 18 years, but, I mean, it, it must easily be tenfold the number of hotels that were back then. 
And mm. it's not stopping either. I mean, we can generally tell the growth of, of that industry by the number of cranes that we see that are mm. up the ground. Mm. Yeah, I can only imagine. Um, must have been quite the privilege to be there uh, quite some time ago, but, and then return today and see that vast change. Which leads me to my, you know, let's deep dive into the hospitality business a little bit from the Radisson, Radisson perspective. Um, you know, I did a quick search online. I uh, wasn't quite sure how many Radisson Group hotels are in Vietnam. It sounds like there's four or five that's underway um, at the moment. Um, I've stayed at one myself already, so um, I am aware of the product here in Vietnam. But what, what factors are contributing to your team's interest in growing its presence here. Um, what are some of the high-level stats that you can draw that, that get your team excited from a development point of view? Yeah, look, I mean, albeit that there's there's a lot of hotels. I mean, there, there's a hotel, a lot of hotels in the market, but there's there's still not enough hotels. Let, let's mm. put that away. There's not a lot of hotels because the hotels that we have, we generally commonly see these days, are focused on those main areas, those, those uh, the capital city, mm-hmm. you know, the, the mm-hmm. business region in city, Hanoi, Da Nang. And then we're really starting to see the other areas come up, come about, you know, whether we talk about well, for what, whether we talk about Nha Trang or Cam Rang around the area, around Frontier and Lung Tao. So we're really starting to see these areas starting to grow. But not only these particular areas, but we're seeing all these areas that we would not have heard about from a very global standpoint, mm-hmm. um, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And we, Vietnam is slowly unearthing these areas and people are becoming more popular and we're putting more hotels there. So, you know, the great thing about Vietnam is it's a country that has everything naturally in the country. You know, you, you can go through business travel, uh, you can go through leisure travel. There's a great coastline, you know, throughout the whole of Vietnam. You can go through bushwalking, you could go to adventure travel, you know, Halong Bay is itself, you know, is itself, itself an experience. So, you know, Vietnam has this great diverse attraction um, naturally. And there's so many different, there's so many areas of Vietnam that is still untouched. So mm-hmm. with that in mind, you know, you know we, we see there's a huge long-term potential in Vietnam um, and not only just in the upscale market. You know, right now we do have four hotels. We have um, a Radisson we have Radisson Blue and Radisson, you know, so they're two of our brands that we have across our nine brands. So, you know, we have everything from a luxury brands um, down to an economy brand. So with that, you know, the Vietnam market take, can take a lot across that diversity between luxury as well as mid-scale because, again, you know, there's there we have a backpackers market in Vietnam, not to say that our brands uh, cater for the backpackers, but, you know, you've got a, an economy traveller, you have a mid-scale traveller, so to be able to cater for these travelers and the demand in Vietnam, yeah, we need to have those hotels of those different categories. Mm. Uh, which leads me to my next question. Uh, what are the plans for Radisson? You've laid out kind of the, the macro kind of interest and factors driving your personal time in, into the country. What are those plans? You, you have four hotels now. There's a fifth on the way. Um, how many hotels do you envision for the Radisson Group in Vietnam in the next few years? Look, we're, we're, we're targeting at least, what, 30, 30 plus hotels by 2025, right? So wow. um, we've, we've got, a, we've got a, a, a pipeline of hotels already currently, mm. today, but our ambition is, is to have 30 by 2025. Um, okay. We're on track at the moment, you know, to, to achieve those targets. So there's no reason that we won't. Mm. Um, the way things are picking up right now in, in Vietnam, the, the way the tourists are coming back to Vietnam, um, you know, we're, we're seeing great growth. I mean, the fundamentals are, are really there. So it's really more of a question of how fast can we get these hotels online to support that growth. Fantastic. And those 30 hotels are spread out across the country in, in the resorts, to the cities, to the secondary cities. And for our listeners today that uh, may not be as familiar with the Radisson brand, given that, you know, four hotels uh, that pales in comparison to some of the bigger groups here, um, at least within the local context. 30 is going to definitely put it in the, the upper echelons of hotel presence. Um, maybe you can give us in a nutshell, what does the Radisson brand mean to you and mean to consumers so that Viet- Vietnamese consumers can understand once you guys bring these hotels online, what can they expect? Well, the expectation is, is, is quite memorable moments, right? I mean, at the end of every day, we, we, we go into every single customer creating memorable moments, and that's, that's key for us. You know, mm. a hotel is, 
is a um, is a static product itself, but at the same time, it, it creates it creates experiences, it creates memories, and th- those are things that you know are self created to the consumer. And you know, it's important for us to be able to deliver those experiences, and you know, t- so they walk away with, with the memory that they can go home and talk to their remember, reminisce, talk to their friends, families, mm. and then come back again. You know, you, you, the importance of of return customers is is, is crucially important for us. Uh, you know, we're always thinking um, one of my mantras is yes I can so there's there's nothing that is generally too hard for us mm-hmm. to achieve got it let's talk let's talk about returning customers you mentioned that it's it's critical to your business I mean I, I used to work in the uh, OTA business myself and uh, returning was always you know the most sought after customer because uh, they understand the brand um, usually they're tied to the loyalty program I'd love to hear your thoughts about that as well um, how important is the loyalty program to Radisson and if possible can you can you point some numbers to that how many members are there in the world how many members do you have in Vietnam if you're able to share that um, and and for a typical hotel night like i'm staying wednesday night at the radisson blue and you know x city how many of them are are returning customers um could you highlight and spotlight some of those facts and figures for us yeah absolutely the, the look i mean the loyalty programs are one of the top four factors of a, a returning or of a customer of a consumer it's mm. not there you know there's, there's always price there's quality um, and loyalty program is is a considering factor so you know knowing that th- that is so important you know of, of mm-hmm. brand loyalty um, and a loyalty program needs to to really support that now for us you know, we, we, we are able to really demonstrate, you know, the, the success of the loyalty programs that we have. You know, we have a combined base of 182 million loyalty members, um, which mm. is, and, and that's globally. I mean, that, that, that's globally itself. So that's important, you know, to have that base whereby, you know, consumers are able to experience all parts of the world, you know, where, where we're actually you know, located, you know, we're across more mm-hmm. than 120 countries globally. So it's important that we have a program that can support, you know, um, all the consumers or all our loyal consumers that we have coming back to our hotels. So, you know, a, a program is, is essential because it gives the consumer comfort of, um, you know, of their stay, that they have a level of expectation of when they're returning to a hotel brand regardless of whether it's in Europe, whether it's in Asia, whether it's in North America, it, there's a certain level of expectation that they have, right? But it's also just important. You know, a loyalty program, it's not a matter about just um, you stay one night and you earn some points and then you can redeem those points for free nights thereafter. You know, loyalty programs are a lot more than that. You know, it's really about understanding the customer, but also creating that value back to the customer and recognizing them for it, you know, and, and mm-hmm. recognizing them as a, as a loyal, as a loyal partner to you. So uh, no one feels like a ticket and, you know, it's important whereby, let me give you an example whereby, you know, you have a, a, a customer who comes in, stays in the hotel, they are Radisson rewards member. They're coming off and they're staying. It's important that they do get you know, best rate guarantee, you know, that, that they're getting a, a good rate but when they're there they're also recognized and whether that's through personalized profiling you know of of their likes their dislikes because we already have that information ahead of time we can really mm. personalize that service um, when they're when they're dining with inside the restaurants themselves i mean it's it's important that we recognize them there so you know being a radisson rewards members when you dine in the fnb there are discounts there are food and beverage discounts um which you know, uh, allows the consumer feeling though that they're getting value for money while they're staying um, at, at the hotel as well. So, you know, the, the way we really look at our consumers, you know, we've really, we're, we fine tune that on ongoing. Um, you know, right now we've just actually revamped the Redis and Rewards program because we've, we've heard our customers, we understand our customer base, where we've actually been able to, simplify a loyalty program so that we used to have four tiers um, like a lot of other companies will have multiple tiers you know we have four we had four tiers but we've actually streamlined it down to only three tiers now which makes it a lot easier um, for the for, for the customer and for the consumer mm-hmm. to basically attain the next level up 
Because we know that from, from research that 70% of loyalty members basically disengage because through it's just too difficult to earn points. Mm -hmm. It takes such a long time. So, you know, we've changed that to only creating three levels. Um, the number of stays and the number of nights we've actually um, lowered down in order for our loyalty members to be able to move to the next level and take the benefits, as I mentioned earlier, of, of being a loyalty member. So, you know, all of these things really encompass a true loyalty program, in my view. I was curious when I was reading about that, um, the lowering the thresholds to engage more customers. That's almost the exact opposite of what these other hotel brands are doing or the airlines are doing. They're, they're inflating the, the uh, I guess you could say, requirements to engage. Um, so I was quite curious to, to understand, you know, what, what are the, you know, obviously the research supports the consumer side and you guys are taking a super consumer friendly approach to it. Um, are there any, you know, potential um, drawbacks from that decision though? Is it, I mean, I'm sure you've done your research and <laughs> done the calculations to see the, the pros and cons of that. Like if I'm a power user of Radisson, right? Suddenly, maybe too many are now the higher tiers. What do you say to the consumers that have been, you know, those power stay, uh, stayers uh, with Radisson um, for the reasons for this change? I mean, I guess you know you're you're getting more points now, right? So you can you can get more free, free nights. That's one um, assumption I would make. Maybe you can share about that uh, the balancing act between the new customers and the the power ones. As you said, you know, everything has been done through research and, you know, we have really, not only from an economic standpoint and it's been done from a consumer standpoint. The purpose of a loyalty program is to have loyalty customers, right? Rather than, mm -hmm. and to have loyalty customers, you can't create barriers in order for the customer to attain to a certain level. Otherwise, you know, it becomes, as I said, it becomes too difficult. And as mm -hmm. statistics have shown that 70% become disengaged because it's just it's just too difficult things move mm -hmm. it, they, they're not they're no longer brand committed after that they'll just mm -hmm. shop around and that's not what we want you know for us it's important to grow that it's great look if, if everybody hits our top tier it's wonderful you know it, it is not a tier that we assign to only one percent of the market we would love for everybody to be in our top tier and we therefore we'd love to give everybody in that top tier the, the highest level of benefits as, as possible at the end of the day you know it is um it, it's a program where it, it's about keeping our customers with us and rather than pushing the customers away and Mm -hmm. create barriers it naturally just pushes mm -hmm. people away yeah um i'm going to move forward to another area that i i always love to ask the development teams of hospitality companies a bit david i mean that is your your focus right development hotel development okay four or five hotels in vietnam first question's got to be how, why did it take so long for radisson to 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 finally decide okay we're going to hit 30 in 2025 uh, what was the development process the last few years that uh, has limited the, the group to only five now, but suddenly it's going to, you know, balloon to, to 30. That's incredible. I'd love to hear, you know, what were some of the challenges you had on the development side? What, what drove the decision-making recently? Yeah, the, the, the market entry into Vietnam for us was relatively recent. And, and you know, and that is, I mean, that, that it really is the, the, the crux to it. You know, we entered into the Vietnam market after, you know, after deciding and after through research and, and mm -hmm. feasibility that it is a, a target market you know there's it's important to do that because once you enter in the market you have to be committed for the long term and it's important mm -hmm. for us to be committed to the long term rather than doing a, a short-term sprint and then now we go and through that you know we've we've committed to the country we've actually set up a uh, we've established a business unit in vietnam alone itself um, mm -hmm. we actually have a team an on-the-ground team that services really the market, our owners, the various stakeholders. Um, and that's crucially important. That really is our commitment to, to being in Vietnam for the long term. So, look, the, the, the growth of the, there are other brands out there that have come in slightly earlier and, and good, good for them. But, you know, there's still plenty of bandwidth within the market, you know, for us. Mm -hmm. And our pipeline is strong because, you know, we, we, when we have started, we started off well. Our partners 
being our hotel owners themselves, they're extremely gracious and they're extremely supportive. And we've been very, very lucky to actually have them because Mm -hmm. you can't have success without them, right? And, uh, you know, we're very lucky whereby, you know, we've been open early this year. We opened two hotels. We opened the the Radisson in in Da Nang and as well as the Mm -hmm. Radisson in Frontier. From day one, we've been able to have great success in those, those hotels and the hotel in Da Nang itself was we had 80% occupancy in June, July, you know, for a hotel that had only been three months old. To really be at that capacity is, is a really strong feat. And that is for us is, is that's the success that we want to continue with every owner to ensure that, you know, we start off on the right foot. Um, well, that comes through really through methodical planning and, and having the right owners and the right properties. Mm-hmm. So in a market like Vietnam, where Radisson has a few properties and they've, um, you know, fairly recent, but they've been performing well, what's your guys' pitch to owners? I ask you this question because I know for a fact many of these prospective, if not current owners of hotels, not just Radisson hotels, do listen to this podcast. What are some of the big, uh, you know, takeaways that you want to share with them when they're considering a hotel operator? What are the key pillars of success? Not just like the big brand, you know, everyone wants to have the luxury brand, right? But that's not necessarily economical or or may not be the best choice. Um, but then again, does an economical choice um, also, uh, you know, add value to their interests? Maybe you can share your big talking points when you and your Radisson team come to the owners about why working, why work with Radisson. Sure. And it goes back to those nine brands that we have, right? Because we have that brand diversity, I mean, they are, they all suit a particular price point, you know, and and the cost of build is is something that every developer is extremely sensitive about on on how much investment they're wanting to put into their investment, right? So, you know, we, we are able to really match that, that criteria, so we're aligned with if an owner has a, a certain budget that he, he's looking at his development, you know, we have a, we, we do have a brand that generally fits that, that particular, that p- p- fits that particular budget for him to deliver the highest level of return. And so mm-hmm. we're, we're not only just focused on the luxury brands, you know, um, or luxury segment, pardon me, as some other brands are, you know, we, we, we do cover that, that breadth. So, Going with that, we're able to cover that return of investment for the particular owners. The other part is, you know, just our uh, 182, you know, base that we have of loyalty members. That, that, that's extremely powerful. You know, when you're talking mm-hmm. about driving loyalty members to your hotels, you know, that, that's a big base to work off. I mean, that's a huge base to work off to driving business into to the hotels. So uh, that's another point. But, you know, commonly, you know, we are in over 120 countries globally. Mm. And, you know, having a customer base, you know, in those particular markets and having a loyalty base in those particular markets, you know, it's extremely important because the feeder market into to Vietnam is not only the big domestic play, but the international play is, is mm. crucial as well. Uh, you know, India is, is becoming a, a growing market, an extremely huge growing market for Vietnam itself, whereby... In Da Nang and, and Cameroon, actually, they're about to do some chartered flights from India into these particular, mm. to, into these particular cities. Um, now, in India, we are actually the largest hotel group in India. Wow. Okay. I did not know that. No. <laughs> and so that, that, that's, you know, it's important that we can leverage, actually leverage that. And, you know, just that wow. alone can actually drive substantial business that su- does support these chartered flights that that are currently flying into Vietnam, which in due time will become, mm. which will become actually commercial flights, a uh, commercial r- route from India mm. into Da Nang or into Cameroon itself. Uh, you know, the, the, the Middle Eastern, the Middle Eastern market is also a growing market for, for Vietnam. Uh, we're the fastest growing brand out of there. So, you know, there, there are many factors that, you know, owners do consider when when, when choosing Mm. person. And we're quite fortunate that, you know, we have a very strong infrastructure as well as footprint globally that allows us to support the hotels that are coming to Vietnam. 
Okay. Yeah, that India fact is very interesting because at least from my side on the the media side, you know, the number of visa applications, for instance, uh, e visas are now uh, granted uh, through through the web for Indian travelers. That's a huge bonus, and I think the number of applicants from India have something like ten x or if not more in the past uh, twelve months. Right. Um, so that is a huge opportunity and, and great statistic to share there. I think you know when we look at these global hotel brands. For example, if I look at a European hospitality firm, you know, I'm thinking, okay, I get European travelers. Uh, Radisson's obviously American, and I'm sure your base of members are mostly American at the same time. But if you look at a regional perspective, to know that India, uh, you guys are the market leader, uh, that's a little bit of a nugget of information that most people wouldn't perceive from the get from the get go. So. Thank you for sharing that, David. A lot of Indian travelers that go to Radisson, then it sounds like. <laughs> um. <laughs> Uh, we're quite, I mean, we are very, we're quite big out of, out of Europe as well, right? So mm. uh, our Radisson Blue brand, which is predominantly the, mm. the, half the footprint in Vietnam, our Radisson Blue. Mm. So Radisson Blue in itself in, out of Europe is, is actually the, the, the largest brand um, in Europe over the last 10 years. So okay. mm. uh, again, footprint wise, uh, quite significant. Mm. Got it, got it. Well, last question about, um, you know, what should consumers pay attention about when it comes to uh, the market trends and, and, and owners as well? I'm, this is a bit of a hardball question for you here, David. For sure, some markets within the country need more hotels. Like I can honestly say that Saigon and even Hanoi, you know, they, they need more places for sure. But then when I go travel to a place like Fukuok, for instance, I was just there over the weekend and phenomenal location and all the properties there are fantastic. I can say a single negative word, but I am concerned about the, the occupancy. I am concerned about um, the overdevelopment of hotels. I'd love to hear, you know, your perspective on potential risks of overdevelopment, if any. Uh, I'm sure you have your opinions and um, about that. What are what are some takes from your side of the business about um, what owners should should look out for when it comes to overdevelopment? I mean, they, they need to really understand the, the market uh, as well, you know, and the supply and demand is, is key, key critical, right? And so there's. And that's where if we distill it down, there's either <clears throat> market supply and demand, there's that region supply and demand, and then it becomes hotel supply and demand. And this is where, you know, even though the market may have substantial supply, but, you know, to any success of any hotel is the, the, the consumer confidence, right? And mm. if a consumer is comfortable with a particular brand, they'll come and stay at the hotel, right? And our growth in, in Vietnam, where this does leverage it, part of that is, you know, we're, we're not concentrated in any one particular area. And, we, you know, we, we have to be prudent in the where we do have our hotels, not to cluster the number of hotels that we have in, in one area. Mm -hmm. um, which, and, you know, that does get into all sorts of, of challenges thereafter. So, you know, the, the, where the spread of hotels that we have, the spread of Radisson hotels that we have throughout the market is is our view of the future, ensuring that, you know, we have hotels that, that start from the south, I mean, from the north, pardon me, moving all the way through the body of Vietnam down to, to South Vietnam as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, most travellers either will take on, and I'm talking in, in general, will either take on one destination or if there's a traveller from overseas that are doing a, having a, a couple of weeks or, or two or three weeks, you know, th th they don't want to stay in one place. They're looking for an experience throughout the whole of Vietnam. And as mm. you know, how as you know, you know, Vietnam is in experiences. It's so different to in the north as it is in the south to, to the central, for example. So it's important to create that journey for them. And and having hotels th spread throughout mm. the country, we are actually able mm. to create that journey for for our customers. And being our loyal to customers as well, where they can actually start and stay at a Radisson Hotel from the north, go to the central, stay in a Radisson Hotel, move down somewhere, you know, between the north and mid, and then down south. You know, they can actually stay at a Radisson all the way through the whole journey um, mm -hmm. and, and, and ensure that they have, have the similar quality of service, the similar standards. Um, and, and that's key critical because that's where, you know, you can create a very clean experience for the consumer as opposed to 
moving from one hotel to another. So, you know, mm. going back to hotel development, you know, to, to your question is, is not only looking at from a supply and demand factor on that particular area, but it's important to ensuring that the, the, the right brand is chosen, you know, the, the brand who can actually give you that business inflow, that, that constant business inflow. So market factors will always drive demand, I think, longer in the longer term. But at the same mm-hmm. time, market share is what we're really focused on and ensuring that we get the biggest pie. Okay. Well, fantastic, David. Um, David, that concludes uh, the bulk of our podcast today. We talked a lot about uh, hospitality, about insights, about development, what owners should look out for, why consumers should think about brands in a certain way. Um, You've been in Vietnam for seven years. It's been a while since you were last year, at least on the ground. I'm sure you've come for business quite a few times. Um, I always like to to wrap up my podcast by asking, well, there's two questions. First question, it's the, the, the easier one, perhaps. You mentioned you have a business unit here on the ground in Vietnam now, taking care of the owners, expanding the business, talking to, uh, looking at new development projects. Are you hiring for that team? What does that team look like? Um, how many of them are there? I'd love to get a quick snapshot of that for, for those listeners that are interested, potentially. Absolutely. Look, we've got our team, our team located in Vietnam are really, at this point in time, are really focused on, from, a, from an operational standpoint, in order for service delivery as, as well as development. So we, we have a number of developers. We are we are growing. I mean, there's we, you know, we've we've come out of a time where um, you know COVID has really penalised. I think a lot of businesses itself. Mm. We were committed uh, during the pandemic. So in reverse, we actually grew our team uh, during the pandemic, and that was in order to prepare ourselves for the recovery that we're coming into at the, this point in time. So, you know, we are constantly growing um, that business unit. You know, we will have a full service business unit in due time that covers everything from the front end from, from a marketing perspective down to technical services mm-hmm. uh, thereafter. So it's important that the business unit is independent whereby it can really service Vietnam um, alone. And, you know, as time goes on, we will progress, as we grow, I mean, we will progressively grow that business unit. Very good. And um, my last question is, um, you know, with your connections and understanding of the Vietnam market, is there anyone else that you think would be great to have on the Vietnam Innovator Show, perhaps outside of hospitality or perhaps within? Um, We'd love to get uh, your quick thought on that if you have anyone to recommend. Yeah, absolutely. Look, look, selfishly enough, I, I I would love to hear uh, hear from someone from the, from the airline industry, actually. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was, it's a crucial part, I think, no, not only from um, a Vietnam, a, a growth perspective, you know, the, the, the economy itself, but also, I mean, tourism, I mean, hospitality specifically, I mean, it depends a lot from, from, from air travel, right, and, and inbound mm-hmm. travel, you know, from the various airlines. You know, there, there's a certain point in time, you know, we've got a number of international airports, you know, some are more busier than others. There's some, but uh, capacity-wise, I think there's a lot more. So I'd love to, I would love to actually hear from somebody uh, from the airline industry to to really uh, give a bit of a, a picture of, of how it looks for the future. Because I think that also yeah. impacts, yeah, economic growth in, in Vietnam. You know, because we're not only just tourism, we're you know we're manufacturing as well. You know, in Vietnam, which is a huge thing. So the inflow of people. Uh, logistics is the, is the other part as well. So, I mean, I, I definitely welcome somebody from the airline industry. Excellent. Well, your your wish will be served soon. I think in the coming months, we have some guests from Bamboo and Vietnam Airlines going to be on the show soon. So look out for that. But, you know, that is top of mind. We've not had anyone from the Viet- uh, airline industry on the show yet. Um, but uh, stay tuned for that. It'll be on the show shortly. Brilliant. Brilliant. Look forward sure. to it. Very good. Uh, everyone, uh, David Nguyen, Managing Director of Radisson in Southeast Asia. Uh, it's been a pleasure to hear about your insights, and uh, we wish the best for the Radisson team and its growth here in Vietnam. We'll be on the lookout. Thank you for having me. You heard everyone, uh, 30 hotels. Let's keep David to it. We'll see you guys next time. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. With a comprehensive healthcare ecosystem, GeoHealth integrates technology to optimize the examination experience for their customers. The GeoSmart Clinic provides a multi-specialty clinic experience with a team of elite doctors and cutting-edge technology. 
And with their recent Series B investment of up to 20 million US dollars, GeoHealth is coming closer to expanding their smart clinic system nationwide.